Good Day Falls shares us in for today's episode with me, Vanessa. Thousands of people evacuate after tidal flood hit central of Indonesia. A tidal flood forced thousands to evacuate in Indonesia's city of Semarang, with authorities warns that flood waters could continue rise. High waves breached the seawall of the city in central Java, causing flood waters to reach 2.1 meters, among the highest levels seen in the area in decades. According to data from the agency, more than 2,000 people evacuated, but no casualties have been reported, which added the extent of what damage was still being assessed as it worked with relevant agencies to coordinate logistics for impacted residents. Indonesia, one of the most disaster-prone nations on Earth, frequently suffers from flood and landslides, particularly during the rainy season from November to March. Twenty-six people missing after the Indonesian ship with 43 people sank in Sulawesi, Indonesia. The search and rescue agency says an Indonesian ship with 43 people on board capsized of Indonesia's Sulawesi island after it ran out of fuel. A search continues for 26 people who remained missing. In addition, local media reports the motorboat that left Paute Report in Makassar, capital of South Sulawesi province, on midnight was reported missing the next day when it failed to arrive at its destination. Then authorities say they think the accident is caused by a fuel shortage and bad weather. <laughs> Indonesia's weather agency warns of waves up to 2.5 meters or 8 feet in Makassar Strait areas and that could cause safety risks. The passengers find are rescued by tugboats and taken to Banjarmasin in South Kalimantan and Jenoponto in South Sulawesi, while rescuers continue the search for other victims. Philippines Congress proclaims Marcos as next president. A joint session of the Philippines Congress declares Ferdinand Marcos Jr. the son and namesake of the notorious late dictator, the winner of this month's election, and confirmed he will become the country's next president. Marcos was joined on stage by his mother and former First Lady Imelda Marcos before being presented with a certificate of presidency. Better known as Bong Bong, Marcos takes over on June 30 from Rodrigo Duterte and will serve until 2028 with the incumbent president's daughter, Sara Duterte Carpio, his vice president. The 64-year-old won 31.6 million votes or 58.77% of ballot cast with an 82% turnout. President-elect of the Philippines and China would like to exchange views on future bilateral relations. Chinese President Xi Jinping have a phone conversation with Philippine President-elect Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos and exchanging their views on bilateral ties and regional development. He stresses that Marcos has participated in and witnessed the development of China-Philippines relations, calling Marcos a builder, supporter and promoter of the China-Philippines friendship. The Chinese president says the two countries should also grasp the general trend, write a grand story on the China-Philippines friendship in the new era and follow through the blueprint for bilateral friendly cooperation. The Chinese president hopes that the Philippines will continue to pursue an independent foreign policy. In addition, Marcos says that the Philippines people regard China as one of their most important partners. The new Philippine government will take the Philippines-China relations as a foreign policy priority and is ready to strengthen exchanges at various levels and deepen cooperation with China in economy, trade, infrastructure, energy, culture and education. Marcos expressed his full expectations for better and stronger development of bilateral relations in the future, adding that he is ready to work with the Chinese side to inject new and strong impetus into the development of bilateral ties. Japan and Malaysia meet in Tokyo to strengthen bilateral ties before celebrating 65th diplomatic relations.
Malaysian Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob meets Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Tokyo in efforts to strengthen bilateral ties. During the meeting, Kishida says he would like to advance Japan's cooperation with Malaysia as this year marks the 65th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the two countries, including their areas of priority regarding the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. It is also the first time the Japan Prime Minister played host to Yakub since taking the post as Japan's premier last year. Seven people dead after high-speed Philippine ferry coke fire. The Coast Guard says seven people dead after a high-speed Philippine ferry carrying 134 people caught fire with seven passengers still missing. The ship caught fire before reaching the port of Real in Quezon province, about 60 kilometers east of capital Manila. It had left Polio Island at 5 a.m. local time and made a distress call at 6.30 a.m. The Coast Guard in a statement says five women and two men died while 120 passengers rescued, with 23 of them treated for injuries. It was not immediately clear the cause of the fire, but the Philippines, an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands, has a poor record for maritime safety, with vessels often overcrowded and many vessels aging. Philippines Marcos vows to defend sovereign rights against China on South China Sea. Philippines President-elect Ferdinand Marcos promises to prevent any foreign interference in the running of his country and to defend sovereign territory and stand up to any Chinese encroachment in the South China Sea. To uh, continue to assert. In his strongest comments yet on how he will handle ties with China, Marcos, who took office on May 30, says he will resist challenges from Beijing and stick to the 2016 ruling of the International Arbitration Court that made clear that Philippines' economic entitlements. Marcos, the son of the dictator ousted by 1986 People's Revolt, says he will not allow any of the archipelago nation's vast coastline or its 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone to be infringed. The 64-year-old who swept last month's election with 59% of the vote. And communication. China to extend pragmatic cooperation with Cook Island. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi says China is willing to keep enhancing mutual trust and extend pragmatic cooperation with the Cook Islands in the greater interest of the people in the two countries. Wang made the remarks in a video meeting with Mark Brown, Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of the Cook Islands. Wang says that since the establishment of diplomatic ties between China and Cook Islands in 1997, bilateral exchanges and cooperation between the two countries have kept advancing in various fields, and bilateral trade volume has increased by nearly 300 times. Brown, for his part, says the sound relations and close cooperation between the two sides are a statement to China's sincerity in treating small countries and its commitment to mutual benefit and win-win results. Meanwhile, Brown says the Cook Islands cherishes relations with China and believes that the future of the Cook Islands is closely linked with China. And that's the wrap-up. Have a nice day. Stay safe. Stay healthy.